It's Adriel, the hunting gear guy, coming to you today with this Remington 770. I didn't really want to buy one of these um, because I've heard of a lot of bad things about them, but I kind of, I kind of had a morbid curiosity to see if they are true and I'd kind of find out on my own. So. I'm going to show you a couple of things about this rifle and uh, a lot of things that you may already know have been problems and maybe some that you haven't. I'm going to start with the bolt um, because it's probably the um, the one thing that this rifle has and doesn't have over a lot, of, a lot of the other budget bolt action rifles. This is a three lug bolt so it's got that nice short lift. You're not, uh, I'm just going to zoom you guys in here a little bit. And what that does is, is it gives a lot, of a lot more clearance on the scope. And it, it's uh, it's generally a, it's supposed to be a little bit faster because you're not lifting the bolt as much, right? Let me just pull it out. And then to pull it out, we've got this metal retaining turning thing for the uh, for the bolt stop, which is kind of junky. Um, mine's just just from from you know cycling the bolt. Um, it's it's hitting the bolt whenever it stops, and if I, I can't really show you this, but. On the inside, the the tab that uh, that this thing is on, which is kind of like a half moon, is already starting to dent in um, from hitting the bolt. Maybe it just does that when it starts and it gets better, and, and you know it doesn't take any more damage. But it's worth mentioning that uh, that it did take a little bit of damage. The bolt itself, nothing wrong with it. We've got a three lug uh, bolt with a, a Remington 700 style. Uh, extractor that's kind of pinned on to the inside of this bolt face. Nothing wrong with that. Um, taking it apart is a little bit hinky. The the manual actually recommends that you that you grab a split ring pliers and, and jam these things two together the, the, to basically pull the firing pin back so you can rotate it out. So that's not all that great. I'm just gonna put the uh, actually before I put the bolt back in. Let's see. I can get you guys to see this. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. You see that how there's two materials here? The, the, this rifle is, is advertised as being a, a receiver of steel, and that's true. Um, but it, at the back here, it's actually got a plastic sleeving on the inside, and this whole tang piece here is plastic. So kind of part of the rear of the bolt and where the bolt is supported as it's moving through the rifle is all in plastic. Now, is that a cost-cutting measure that's worth it? Ah, you know what? I don't, I don't think so. Um, the Savage Axis gets away with not doing that and, and pretty much every other bolt. And what it does is, when you're pushing this thing and you're a little bit off axis, it actually jams it. Let me just see if I can get a better shot of that. So if you're pushing it just a little bit off axis, it, it jams because this plastic gives a little bit and it lets the bolt bind up as it's, as it's going in there which won't let it ram forward. And you might say, well, just make sure it's exactly straight, fo straight forward and you're not twisting it at all as you're pushing it in. That's fine, except when you're out there, you know, hunting and, and you try to try to jam this bolt in it and it won't go in kind of a thing. So, whatever. Um, that's kind of crappy um, on these things. The other thing, and, and this, is, this is part of the design of this rifle, this isn't a, a, a threaded barrel. This isn't a barrel that they just screw in here and it doesn't use a nut. So these are, um, are you, the, you know, they use mechanical pressure to push, put these things together. And the problem with that is, how do you do your headspace? And the answer is, well, you, you hope that it comes out right in the end. And with this rifle, oh, you know what? It's a little bit tight. I'm going to throw it on safety here. I've just got to point it in a safe direction. I'm going to show you guys something. This is just a dummy round I've got here. And how hard do you think it is to put and lock this bolt? <clears throat> well, hard enough that you, <laughs> you gotta slam the stupid thing. So I mean, what kind of bolt? What kind of bolt action does this? Uh, so I, th I think I have to return this rifle because, like, that by itself uh, makes it pretty unusable for me. Um, just I just want to mention some of the other things on here. The trigger itself, I didn't I didn't think was too bad on this version. Uh, this trigger guard is just the worst thing in the world. It looks awful. Uh, you know, maybe they put it on here just to make it look cheap so that no one would you know if you had the money you'd go with something better. But man, what an ugly trigger guard. Uh, the trigger pull itself is good. Check we're clear here. 
I don't mind where the where the safety is. Um, I do prefer a tang safety, but this one is just kind of located over the, on the side here. It's smooth enough. I'm not going to complain at all about something like this. The trigger has a little bit of a travel to it. There's you can see that grit there. But you know, all, all in all, just considering the price range of this rifle, not all that bad. Um, the scope is not good, but they never are on these package rifles. I mean, the, the whole idea is that if, if you have absolutely no money, you go out shooting with, with one of these scopes, and then the next year you upgrade to a, a, a real scope that's better. Uh, the butt pad is pretty hard. There's not a lot of give going on with this thing. And the stock is, I don't know, okay. Um, I don't know if it's by design, but mine isn't free floated. I tried putting a, you know, doing the dollar bill thing where you wrap it around the barrel and mine gets stopped up right about here. So it's not really free floated. And then we get to the mag. And there's a couple of things I don't like about this mag. I, what things I like? Well, the metal body, you know, the fact that this metal isn't bad. Um, it, it does have a, a built-in toggle towards the front here, so that when you pop the mag in, keeping in mind, this mag is not all that easy to pop in. Let me zoom you in a little bit here. I'm just going to try to do this fast. Yay! I got the mag in! <laughs> it's not a fast mag to put in. And it's because, well, the fit's poor, and it's got these kind of like two little dimples on the front here. Those are kind of acting against you. It's got the dimple on the back. They're supposed to lock into something in there. And if you practice a lot, you could probably do this somewhat speedily. But this is not a good experience putting a mag in. That's issue number one. Issue number two, the fit on, on the bottom of this rifle sucks. It looks bad. It feels bad on your hand. It's not a good fit. It doesn't spring out. So you have to pull it out like that. I'm going to throw my rifle to the side here. And let's just look at this beautiful mag. Now, you might have seen um, some people out there with mags on these things that have exploded. Uh, and not like exploded with fireworks and all that kind of stuff, but exploded as in they've fallen apart catastrophically. I figured out how to do this on command. And it's uh, it's quite easy. So there you have it. There's your loaded round, uh, loaded mags that uh, that you're ready to go out with. You go to the range and you shoot it, and that would involve jarring it. And there he goes. There goes your mag. It's just self-destructive. <laughs> uh, I might have to pause it and grab the pieces and come back. One second. So what just happened to this magazine is that. I actually took this magazine apart to clean it. Uh, I used the, the method described in the manual. And what they didn't tell you is that this mag body is made up of some... Come on, focus. There she goes. This mag body is made up of some awful, bendy metal. It, it should be a little bit more springy. But this tab here at the front, there we go, is actually possible to bend. So. When you're taking the thing f apart for the first time, you're putting your screwdriver in there to bend that tab in so it kind of extracts it from this plastic plate. Just kind of get up there again. There's our tab at the front. And when you bend that tab back, it holds the bend. That's the problem right there. If this tab holds this bend, if it's not bent out and it's not grabbing that tiny little piece of plastic on the floor plate, this thing's going to come apart. So you actually, when you're putting it back together, you have to fiddle with it a little bit and fiddle with that bend so that it all goes back together more or less correctly. Check out that follower there. Just a flat piece of junky plastic. Let's see if I can get it back together again and hold. Okay, there's that piece. Spring. I believe this piece was like this. Uh, see, uh, my, my tab is just a little bit too far forward here, so what I'm going to do is just kind of gently press it in. And yeah, there we go, it snapped in there. So, oh, there's still a little bit of wiggle to it. The thing that you'll need to do when, you, when you're putting your mag back together is just to tr like try twisting it out 
And if you can twist it out, it's not tight enough. And just bend that tab forward just a little bit and then try it again. This is not how your mag should be, but this is how this mag is. That feels a little bit better. Wow. <laughs> not exactly confidence inspiring though, right? So let's just kind of bring the rifle back here. So, you know, a lot of people still really love their uh, their Remington 770s, and, and I can see why. You know, th this new generation of bolt-action rifles that we have are really accurate. They do do the job. If, you know, if you, if you get this out in the field and you can actually chamber around um, and point it at a deer, you'll probably kill it. But the thing is, this is not the best rifle for the money. It's not even close. It's, it's probably the worst rifle for any money that you can get that's new. Um, and, and just flat out, if you're looking at this thing, don't buy it. Go buy a Savage Axis. They're way better um, in pretty much every way. And that's, that's the, the, long, and story of the short, uh, long and short of the story. Don't buy the Remington 770. Get a Savage Axis instead. There's lots of other choices out there if, if you're, you're willing to go for a little bit more. There's the, whether it be Vanguards, um, there's the Browning AB3s, lots of different versions out there. Don't buy this rifle.